Not many things surprise me with the Jaguars, but when it does, I'll let you know. Some good, some bad. We'll talk about them here in just a second on Locked on Jaguars. You are Locked on Jaguars, your daily Jacksonville Jaguars podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. That is correct. It is your team every day here on Locked On Jaguars. We thank you for making us your first listen. You can find us on YouTube at the Locked On Jaguars page and then wherever else you get your podcast. If you listen to audio podcasts, check that platform out. And we'll be there too. Shout out to the everydayers for joining us here every single day on Locked On Jaguars. We're glad to have you. And today's show is brought to you and sponsored by FanDuel. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet five dollars and get a three-week free trial of nfl sunday ticket from youtube and youtube tv <clears throat> from youtube and youtube tv excuse me visit fanduel.com to get started let's give you a rundown of what we're going to talk about here today i'm going to tell you in the third segment some of the things that you might have saw that were a bit it's not necessarily the way that it is. Things that I believe are corrected and things that will give them an incomplete grade and the jury's still out. Of course, it's just week one, so the jury's going to still be out on a whole bunch of stuff. In the middle, we'll talk about surprising negatives. That means that we're talking about surprising negatives in segment number two, that we're going to start with pleasant positives in segment number one. And I think there was a lot of pleasant positives to talk about with this football team uh, from Sunday. I mean, if, if you go through it, you can see uh, it's hard to do it from the end of the game, right? So I'll ask you this. Right before Travis Etienne fumbled that ball, just right before he fumbled the ball, how are you feeling? That's where I want to focus on. And that's what I want to bring to your attention. How are you feeling at that point with the Jaguars appearing to go up 24-7, at that point, if I would have stopped the game and said, how do you feel about this team up to this point? Right before Javon Holland poked the ball out, what would you say? Those are the things we're going to focus on. Now, I know the answer to that is, yeah, but. Okay, so we'll get into the yeah, but part of this conversation in segment two. And yeah, but is significant. And I'm not trying to, uh, make you not acknowledge that it was very significant and acknowledge that the things that you saw were not worrisome and things that shouldn't bother you. That's the point of this show. But just like the game starts in the first quarter, we're going to start with the things that were positive because that's what we saw up until two minutes left to go uh, in the third quarter. Keep this in mind also. I'm not going to necessarily nitpick and, and name every little thing. The reason why is because much like boxing, I never saw a boxing match where I didn't at least see the dude, and no matter how dominant he was winning, that he didn't get hit. And he didn't have to come through some adversity. So no football team is perfect, right? If you look at the best team you saw this weekend, I'm sure they had plays where they did something that they weren't supposed to do or guys did something and or something was working on them that, you know, they had to kind of fix or so. When it's your own team, sometimes it's very, very easy for you to that even when they do something good, say, yeah, it's not good enough. And if you're a Jaguar fan thinking that way, I applaud you. I applaud you because I said a long time ago with this team and this franchise, if you're ever going to win, if you're ever going to be a winner, you got to start acting like one. Right. Even before the winning starts. Doesn't mean you're faking it till you make it, but it just means your expectation for this team should be the same as all winning teams. You ever watch college football and Alabama's up 35 nothing, and they make a mistake and Nick Saban goes ballistic and even the fans, they go ballistic because the fans know that that is not the standard that these teams uh, want to put on display. So I, I, I'm glad the Jaguar fans are saying to hell with the two and a half quarters or two and two thirds quarters. I'm looking at the total thing and we don't have any moral victories. Trust me. I am happy you're thinking that way. Me pointing out positives, though, uh, first is just to let you know that 
there, there is still some sunshine to be had. It's been raining here for seven days in Jacksonville. And I'm thinking like, but see, even through that, I know at some point that sun's going to come back out. Right. So I'm just trying to put a positive spin on this thing. So positive uh, things is the development of Tank Bigsby. Last year and Tank said it himself. Everybody thought I was a failure. So keep thinking that or whatever he said. I ain't tripping on that too much because, you know, folks have a job to do and uh, Tank wasn't playing well last year. So therefore it was discussed. But I do remember some people saying that they shouldn't have used the third round pick on a running back. And I'm thinking like <laughs> people already say you shouldn't use a first round pick on a running back. They say you should use a second round pick. At what point is it good enough to get one? Fourth, fifth, sixth round? No, third round running back that is playing the way Tank Bigsby played this preseason and, and now – uh, I, I even heard people, people that I respect saying, I think he needs to be the best running. He, he's the best running back we have given the ball more. They want to take ETN and just put him on the back burner. And I'm not there. And I don't think I'm going to be there for a while. I don't think I'm ever going to get there. In fact, but the thing is, is he has a lot of value for this team and his running style is very, very uh, formidable. Uh, he breaks tackles. He does it with speed. It's the yin and the yang, man. It's peanut butter and jelly. It's fire and ice. It's all of those things. It's a little bit of a change up uh, from ETN. And I think the long haul means that they are both going to end up helping this football team. But the thing about Tank Bigsby in particular is that you see the uh, firsthand with him, you see the development. You can also add the thing in, that in for Parker Washington, too. You see the development. You see their um, transitioning from year one to year two. The Jaguars used to have a big problem with onboarding, with getting guys to be productive when you first draft them. We're still waiting on Britton Strange, right? Uh, the biggest one that everybody wanted to develop faster was Trayvon Walker. That's my next one. Trayvon Walker has two had two sacks in game one, coming off a year where he had uh, a dime, where he had 10 of them last year, and he easily could have had 15 if the people hadn't gotten away from him. And he had the number one run grade, rush defense grade in the league, despite being the guy that was double teamed the most. Now, coaches that watch tape don't double team people that they don't feel need to be double teamed. And this is the thing that we have been trying to, I know I've been trying to echo to those people that wanted more production that were saying that he wasn't worth it and all of this. Listen, let me tell you something. Nothing tells you what other people feel about a player and what they see on tape than what they do when they play that team. He was doubled more, not on the Jaguars. He was doubled more than anybody in the National Football League, according to the analytics. And he still had the top uh, uh, run defense grade, and he still got two sacks. Ain't nothing going to tell you what people think about somebody more than what they do when they play against a person. So the thing, don't believe me, just believe the actions of the opposing coaches. And so those are some things that uh, are good that haven't been good in the past. Remember, we used to say, when are the Jaguars going to resign their own guys? Yeah, the way they resigned a lot of their own guys. And now their draft picks are looking like they hit on Brian Thomas Jr. They obviously hit on him. I think he's already their best wide receiver. I think he's the guy. We're going to hit that in segment three. That when you start looking at dudes that's going to get you home, it needs to be him. I'm already feeling that it needs to be him. And you saw the difference in him and his impact. I'm not saying he's done. I'm not saying he's totally polished. But what I am telling you is I don't think there's a reason to keep a bib on this kid and to keep a pamper on him like he's a baby. I think he's ready to start walking. And I think he might be ready to start running. You know, a toddler goes through your house and he starts running. He just he realizes he knows how to run now. So he's just going to do it all the time, no matter what he runs into. Well, you know what? Let him go. Let him figure it out. So I'm just sitting there thinking that those are some positive things that you can take out of this game. And the fact that you actually saw what their intent was. Now we got to get to the rest of the story. As the late great Paul Harvey used to say, we got to actually talk about the whole thing. So I started it out with sunshine and rainbows, even though there's no sunshine in Northeast Florida today, you still have some things to look forward to. And through Two and two and three quarters of a quarter, they were taking one of the top seven, top eight teams in the league and making them look extremely average. Is that something to build on? Sure. But in order to build on that, we got to talk about the rest of this stuff. Things that uh, were surprising negatives for me. And I'm going to get to it in segment number two here on Locked on Jaguars. 
Yeah, first I gotta let you know about FanDuel. Do y'all know what time it is, man? There's actually toe to leather. It's real football. The games count. When the games count, teams take everything a little more seriously. And now your money won't be played with when you go to FanDuel. Now you heard us talk a lot about FanDuel because it's America's number one sports book. But now that these games have started, we have a little something different for you. Now through September 22nd, all FanDuel customers can bet $5 and get a three-week free trial of NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube TV and YouTube. That means you get to watch every single game out of your market all Sunday, whether it's your fantasy teams or whether it's your wagers. Sometimes we feel like if we're watching the game, it'll go more in our favor. So there you go. With YouTube TV's base plan, you'll be able to watch every regular season game, Sunday afternoon, out of market game. All you need is a Google account and a current form of payment, and you can cancel at any time. You ain't going to want to, though. Just visit FanDuel.com and download America's number one sportsbook. All right, segment two here on Locked on Jaguars with your team every day. Um, I got to tell you about something else every day real quick. And you probably already know, but in, just in case you haven't, y'all know I left the barbershop, but the barbershop didn't leave me. The new Locked on NFL is here. Locked on NFL is now two shows every day. First, the Madman Tyler Rowland kicks off your, your morning with a double shot of NFL espresso and then stop by the barbershop with me, Tony Wiggins, for some real NFL talk. Add in the locked on local experts and you get unprecedented NFL insight, hot opinions and a whole bunch of funny stuff, too. Right. Make the madman Tyler Rowland and the barber Tony Wiggins your second listen at the new locked on NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. You're going to get some detailed breakdowns. And each show is 30 minutes. That's right. 30 minutes of nothing but us having fun and informing you on the rest of the National Football League. Now, let's get back to our local team here on the First Coast in Jacksonville. We mentioned some surprising positives. I got to talk about some, well, we mentioned pleasant positives. Let me get my own stuff right. And then now I got to talk about surprising negatives. I was shocked that even with their rotation and even with their depth, with how the Jacksonville Jaguars were unable to control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball late in the game when they needed to the most. They couldn't impact to a tackle the lower. And we now know that Miami went to some max protects. And I even mentioned why the Jaguars wouldn't do the same thing at the end of the game. Miami went to some max protects with some two man routes. I saw a video by ex uh, head coach Dave Campo uh, I can't remember where I saw it, but shout out to whoever put it up. I, it might have been Gus Lowe. Um If if it's not Gus, I'm I'm sorry, but I saw it somewhere and I read it. I read so much stuff. What Campo really said that on the 63 yard catch by Waddle, that there was a mistake by a player where it wasn't coached up. Now you can probably. You could probably juxtapose that this is what Doug was talking about when he said it's a coaching issue, all right? And he didn't want to throw his player under the bus, but what it sounds like is from a coaching issue when certain things happen, a player has one or two things, right, that they can do. It's the right or the wrong thing, but both of them can be sort of right it can be sort of the right thing to do but in certain situations you have to prioritize your response and antonio johnson didn't do that on a certain play so it's the 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 play when waddle went for 63 yards there's only a two-man route it was it was tyreek hill on one side and waddle on the other waddle came across the formation ran totally to the other side tyreek came up and 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 his route stopped and he, and, and he got the exact response from the safety, the deeper safety, the safety came up to him. And when he came up to him, Waddle came right across behind his back, behind the formation where he left. And that's Antonio Johnson. And that means that Andre Cisco has to catch Waddle from the other side. Now, he ended up tackling him because Waddle didn't score the touchdown. But there's no way he's going to prevent him. Just imagine two guys playing halves. One guy comes across the formation. That safety releases him to the other guy, but the other guy ain't home because the other guy bit on Tyreek in front of him. 
and he immediately zipped up to Tyreek, and that's a throw that the Jaguars would want them to throw that ball to Tyreek because you would have un- underneath help coming back, and, and he's still in front of you, so you can run up and tackle him. And he's also going to be at that point closer to Andre Sisco, who could then know, okay, nobody else is over here. I see him over there. I can run. It's just a communication issue where they probably need to teach that kid in that situation to not go up. So another one of the shockers for me was, well, first of all, you ain't going to beat max protection. Not when they're using only two men to go out. That means they got eight people blocking. You you ain't going to beat it unless you call the blitz, right? So that isn't a play that I'm blaming on the defensive line. It's just as a whole, the defensive line didn't have the impact in the fourth quarter that they had in the first two and a half, three quarters, right? And then the offensive line, for Jacksonville had an impact. They were running all over the place. Folks don't, you know, don't get amnesia. Remember when ETN fumbled, that was in the third quarter, late in the third quarter, because everybody's trying to say, well, they only passed the ball seven times. You know why they only passed it seven times? Because even on that drive, they drove 96 yards and they did a lot of that with chunk plays and, and running the clock. It was working. And on that particular play, If he doesn't fumble, it's a 13-yard touchdown right up the gut. It was working. After that play, all of a sudden, that offensive line act like they couldn't block anymore. Now, Miami did some different stuff. Miami switched to a zone, and they hadn't been playing zone all game, and that kind of bothered the offense because they gave Trevor said they gave a different look that they hadn't given us before. That's going to lead us to something in segment three called adjustments. One team made them and the other team didn't, right? They found a way to win the game. But still, for the Jaguars to be rotating all of those players on that defensive line, that means they should be fresh in the fourth quarter, and it appeared that they weren't. So is all the switching and all of the rotating, is it worth it if the guys aren't going to be fresh? Is it hampering the guys from getting to a rhythm? Whatever it was, they should have been able to control it, and they weren't. The offensive line, in the fourth quarter, they looked like the offensive line from last year. Anton Harrison might have had the worst game. I've been bragging on him saying I think he's going to be an all-pro. He didn't look like it the other day. He really did not look like it. That dude, Ogba, was killing him, and Ogba wasn't even on the team. He was there last year. They let him go, and then when he got injuries, they went and got him back. All right? Calais Campbell, um, Brandon Sheriff, and the rest of those dudes. Calais Campbell was getting loose, not only chasing the quarterback, but in the backfield with tackles for loss, and he had an impact on the game. The thing is, is Calais Campbell, they didn't want him last year or this year when he was in free agency here in Jacksonville, and then he came back to bite him in the butt. And he's like 40-some-odd years old. I'm joking, but he's not that old. But you get the point. The point is, is the Jaguars' offensive line, only because Miami had sort of a patchwork defensive line and they lost some people and they still have other people injured, were expected to dominate the game. At first they did okay and then it went away. So what happened to the domination? Then their defensive line was playing against a patchwork offensive line, although Terran Armstead was healthy. So I understand Josh Hines Allen not having a field day because Armstead, had he been healthy his entire career, would probably be going to Canton. He's that good when he's healthy. But I was a little bit surprised that there wasn't more domination, especially in that run game uh, on both sides of the ball late in the game. I'm going to tell you some things that the jury's still out on, and it might be even some of these things I've already mentioned because it is only one game. But we'll get to that in segment number three in just a second here on Locked on Jaguars. eBay Motors. We're sitting here talking about how to win football games. How about this? Passion, drive, and patience is the formula for winning championships on the field, and it's also what keeps your ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance. Superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has you covered with over 122 million parts for your ride or die. You'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to make your car the MVP and bring home huge wins. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. 
Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right. Third and final segment. It's hump day. It's raining outside. So I hope you're safe while listening to Locked On Jaguars. I'm giving you something here, man, today. Positives and negatives. We're not going to spin anything, but we're also not going to go overboard and panic because it's still just one game. All right. The jury's still out on certain things. Let me go back through the positives and negatives and try to let you know that some of these things are, are fixable. I think they need to go with their best players on defense in crunch time. I don't want to see a whole bunch of rotation with all due respect to some of the reserves and backups. I think if you're going to rotate players in the fourth quarter, you, you, you when I look out there, if I'm going to get beat, I want to get beat with 41, 44, uh, 52, 91. I want to see those dudes, man. I don't want to see a mix and match of people on that. I don't want to see Roy Robertson Harris at the four eye. I don't want to see Tyler Lacey on the interior. If you haven't controlled the game enough up to that point to have your best players in the game in the fourth quarter when the game is tied or you're, or you're winning, then something is wrong. I, football to me is about guys getting greased up. Depth is good to have in case you need it, but not just to show and flex and show everybody how many people you have. I think the goal here is to win, and I'm not saying that that's what – Defensive coordinator Ryan Nielsen is doing. I'm sure what he's doing is what he believes in and what he believes works for a long macro look at uh, the entire season. But as we go along, this entire season is also a series of one 17 single games. And the more of those single games you find a way to win, the better it'll be at the end. And Miami found a way to win by switching to a zone when Jacksonville least expected, even though they had run it all, all that. By going to max protect and saying, you know what? We ain't trying to get all these people out in this route. We're just going to send Waddle out there, and we're going to send Cheetah out there, and we we just believe in them. But if we give two a time, he's going to shred them because somebody's going to make a mistake. It's like knowing that type of stuff. Having some plays when things get tough and you get the ball back with three minutes to go, having some things designed that you can dial up that you know they haven't seen, that beat them to the punch. Don't let them dictate to you and put you in a box. And, and, and then while the crowd is yelling and screaming and, and, and you're desperate to get something done, quiet them. Good teams find a way to quiet the opposition. When you watch Patrick Mahomes play in that same situation, and, and I know I'm comparing Trevor to Patrick Mahomes, but what I'm really doing is talking about the standard to win a championship. And I'll just use Kansas City as an example because, well, they won two in a row. Um, you get the feeling that no matter what you do, if it's third and four, they're going to get five. They got to play design, man. They'll fake one way and roll, and Mahomes will just dump it off to one of those running backs, and he'll turn up, and it's a first down. Or he'll throw it to a, a, a number 84, and I call him number 84 because he ain't number 87. Whoever that other tight end, he'll catch it, and he'll run out of bounds, he'll get a first down. It's design plays, things that they know work that work in the red zone and things that they know that work when the game is late it's the best play you have. It's the one. It might be one they haven't even seen yet. But it's almost like a computer program, and that's what good teams do. The Dolphins did it the other day. Every time on third down when they needed something in those last two drives, it seemed like to me they threw a little screen to Devin A. Chain, and he broke a tackle, and he got a good lean. One time they gave the ball to Jeff freaking Wilson, and then it was Raheem Mostert. It was third down and like nine, and they just threw a little quick out, and the dude got 11 yards. They they just know it's going to happen because they're going to block it, and it's going to work, and it's their best play. And when they call it, it's like, all right, meet me back in the huddle because we're still going to have the ball. They know it's going to work, and the good teams find a way to do that, and if the Jaguars want to be a good team, I think they have to find those, those three, four, or five plays that they work on that you haven't seen that gives a little bit of a different look. The other thing is is – identifying your best players and this is something that i, I i'm not going to say that the jaguars purposely just sat there back like john madden and and, and and like you're playing john madden and go all right when we come out with this momentum we have the first thing we're going to do when we come out of the locker room is we're going to give the ball to tank bigsby who's not our starter 
And then we're going to throw a little quick out screen to Parker Washington, who got tackled. And now it's third and long. We don't convert, and now we're on the sideline. So I'm going to just assume the way that this works to keep this positive. I'm going to just assume that what they did was they said, we're going to give them these looks, and we like these plays, and these two guys run those plays. I'm hoping that they call plays and said, who runs those plays the best? And went to that. Or they looked at the preseason tape or looked at training camp tape and said, you know, good things happen when we run those plays in this personnel. So let's start the game off in this package. I hope that's what happened. I hope they didn't come out in the second half and say, let's let's get a uh, tank a touch and get Parker Washington a touch. We, if that's the case, we have to come out and we have to give Travis Etienne a touch and give Brian Thomas, uh, Brian Thomas Jr. a touch. If we're, if we're saying plays or playmakers, I'd rather go to us with playmakers as opposed to just plays. I think the start of the second half was pretty nondescript and pretty brutal. Now they overcame it because then they got the ball back and they went down the field. They, they looked like they were going to have another 96 yard scoring drive. So it's something that they were doing that was working, but it's just those little things, the ability at certain times of the game to make a statement, and they just didn't do it. They have to find a way to do that. The other thing they have to find a way to do, that, that's the situational play calling aspect that I wrote down here that I wanted to make sure I covered. The other thing that I, that, that I believe that they really have to do, and, and this is something that I hope happens because I've seen it in the past where it didn't, Move, move beyond this game. I Whether it's Travis Etienne. I remember I saw the movie Life when Eddie Murphy was fighting and Willie Long stopped the fight and said, okay, he's taking enough of a beating. Take him on in. We need to pull him from under the bus now and encourage him. We beat him up enough, and now he has to move on and he has to get to the next play. He's not known as a fumbler. I don't think it's going to keep happening. I hope that they can get past that. I hope the team actually gets past the fact that they had one and they let it go. You can't linger there. You have to move forward. You have to move forward in your play calling. You have to have the same aggressiveness, the same attitude that you had in those first two and three quarters. And I think the Jaguars are more than capable of getting that done. We've seen in the past, though, where just like in that game the other day, that one in one quarter at 17 minutes, those 17 minutes is like everything that could go wrong just kept going wrong. And it was like steamrolling like a school bus with bad brakes and no clutch going downhill. It's like, how are we going to stop? You start looking for those hills where you run off, you know, where those trucks run off and uh, we need something to help us slow down this negative momentum. Well, they couldn't do it themselves. Hopefully that ended when that game ended and, they'll get back on it and, and say, we got to have a short memory. We got to move past this because the quicker they move past it, the quicker the fans move past it. And we get back to enjoying football the way it's supposed to be enjoyed. Cleveland Browns this weekend, home opener for Jacksonville crossover tomorrow with Jeff Lloyd of locked on Browns. We're going to get to all of the key matchups. Make sure you tap into that here on locked on Jaguars. It's sponsored by prize picks as well. We'll make sure we get to the, the uh, the crossover tomorrow and give you all the information. We'll post that and uh, you'll hear the key matchups from both teams and some of the things that we think have to get done in order for both of these 0-1 teams to win a game. A little bit of drama. you got somebody's going to win their first game of the year and somebody's going 0-2. 0-2 is not somewhere where you want to be if you're Jacksonville and you got two straight games on the road against playoff teams. All right, man, make sure you tap in here tomorrow on Locked On Jaguars and then on your second listen, Here's what I want you to do. I want you to tune in to Locked On NFL. There's two versions. One, early in the morning with Tyler Rowland. He gives you the shot of NFL Express Show. And then me in the middle of the day, come back to the barbershop with me. I left the barbershop, but the barbershop doesn't leave, leave me. And I'm going to give that to you while we talk some NFL football. 30 minutes. That's right. Detailed breakdowns in 30 minutes with the Locked On local experts. Gives you the insight you can't get anywhere else. Tyler Rowland early, Tony Wiggins later in the day on the new Locked On NFL on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast. You guys enjoy the rest of the day and hopefully the Jaguars can get back on a little bit of a winning streak. And we'll talk about it if they don't. But if they do, make sure you tap into Locked On Jaguars. 
and you'll get the best show in the world. All right, till next time, we'll see you.